Yes, my dear viewers, don't lose patience. I shall soon be on. Yes, I'm present before you. And today also you're going to learn some words, some English words. And especially these words are very informal words, okay? These informal words we generally use in spoken English. If you are interested in learning spoken English, then I shall advise you to take down these words and expressions which I'm going to provide you with soon. Okay, here you see there are nine sentences. And all these nine sentences are written in formal English, absolutely formal English. By formal English, I mean the English that you generally use when you are uh, writing something, okay? Especially a formal uh, piece of writing. Say you are writing an essay or you are writing a formal letter. I must uh, tell you that to avoid using this kind of words there, but these words are all right. Now I'm going to write the informal words by the side. And if you are into spoken English, please note down in your exercise book. If you don't note down in your exercise book, it will be difficult for you to remember the words. And uh, you can do another thing if you don't have a notebook around. So you may try to remember these words. And if you forget, the video is always there for you. So watch this video once again. Now look at the board. Number one, he is now in a risky situation. Very formal English. Do you agree with me? Is there any informal word here? Of course not. Therefore, this sentence is absolutely formal. When you are speaking to the dignitaries, when you are speaking to the elderly members of your family, you are supposed to use this type of English. Now I'm going to recast this sentence uh, into uh, very informal English, which you use or you may use uh, when you are uh, in a conversation with your friends. All right. So what is that informal sentence? He is now this far, is, this much is okay. I'm not going to bring about any change there. So I'm going to change this part only in a risky situation. And in spoken English, you may say, he is now skating on thin ice. He is now skating on thin ice. So I'm not writing the entire sentence again. I will simply write that uh, informal phrase here. Skating, yes. Okay, skating also not necessary. You may tell simply, uh, he is on thin ice. Okay, if you don't like to use the word skating, it doesn't matter. You may simply say that he is on thin ice. So the phrase is on thin, D-H-I-N, on thin ice, I-C-E, on thin ice. If you find it difficult to uh, understand what is written here because uh, the type is very small indeed, I shall request you to watch this video full screen so that you can easily make out what is written here and what I'm going to write here. I think it's possible for you to understand what is written here on that side because this handwriting is quite clear and you can understand every word. But as you know, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, you know very well my handwriting is very, very, uh, very pathetically poor, uh, of which I'm very ashamed. So please try to note down when I'm writing these uh, informal terms. So on thin ice means in a risky situation. So he's on thin ice, or you may say that uh, uh, my friend is on thin ice, whichever subject you like, you can use there. Well, let us move on to the uh, second one. And the second one is, it is really doubtful. So it is really, this part is okay. I'll be changing this particular word only. Doubtful is a very, very formal word. There is no doubt about that. There's no doubt about doubtful. <laughs> doubtful being a formal word. But what is that informal word which we can use when we are uh, talking to our friends? The word is very simple word. You know that. I double F Y Ify. I double F Y Ify. Everybody knows the word if. You don't have to learn that word anew because you know the word. If. And now this is the adjective form of that. Ify. Ify means doubtful. If something is doubtful, you may say that, oh, that's ify. Oh, the result is, uh, resu I have seen the result, but the result is ify. 
If he means doubtful. That's right. Let us move on to the next one. Uh, number three. I have a strong desire to travel. I have a strong desire to travel. So we, what I'm going to change now, see. This part only I shall be changing. I have, this far is okay, a strong desire to travel, very, very formal. Now I will be changing this particular uh, part of the sentence into an informal expression. And that is, I have got, G-O-T, got, Ichi, I, T, C, H, Y. I have got Ichi fit. F, double E, T. I have got Ichi fit. I have got Ichi fit means I have a strong desire to travel. Say one of your friends uh, is very fond of traveling. He always um, goes uh, to different places. And uh, not only he, but uh, the other members of his family also want to go. So you, you may say at the time that uh, your family uh, has got itchy feet. Oh, how long will you be staying here? I don't think you'll be staying here for long. Why? Because you have got itchy feet. Because you have got itchy feet. All right. Try to remember this. These words are very easy indeed. So it is not that very, um, uh, very, very bombastic words are being used. It's really too difficult for you to pronounce those words. Nothing of that sort. These words are so simple. See, each, I-T-C-H, each, everyone knows the word is suffering from itches. Okay. Well, uh, when uh, your hand itches, you just scratch it in this manner. So, got itchy feet. Number four, don't be upset. Very, very formal. I think there is hardly anybody in India at least who will fail to understand what this sentence means. Now, I'm going to recast this sentence into an informal sentence which we generally do not use when we uh, write a piece. So it is, don't be upset, be upset. This part only I shall change. And it will be, don't have H A V E. Don't have kittens. K I T T E N is don't have kittens you have gone to your friend's house and you see that he is very upset um, because of some reason you do not understand that or you do not know that so you must say at the time uh, please don't have kittens now i am here to accompany you please share with me all the problems that you have i will try my best to find a plausible solution to your problems so don't have kittens do you know the meaning of the word kitten a baby cat. A baby cat is called kitten. All right. But here it doesn't mean a baby cat. Here this phrase means to be upset. He has kittens. Don't have kittens. Next, number five. He was completely confused. So what am I going to change? I think you can guess what I'm uh, going to change now. He was. This far is okay. There will be no change brought about here. So, I am going to change this part only. Completely confused. He was completely confused. In spoken English, we may say, He was tied, T-I-E-D, tied in, I-N-E, in knots, K -N -O T S. He was completely confused. So this part is okay. So you write, uh, you will say he was, then this part. Tied in knots. Tied in knots means com confused, to be confused. Number six, he has gone to urinate. Urinate, everybody knows the word. Urine, from there the verb form urinate. Urine is a noun. But when we uh, when we just make urine, uh, I mean use urine as a verb, we have to use the word urinate. Okay, and in uh, spoken English, we often see in different films also we 
Uh, see, people use the word P, P W -E P. P means to urinate. You may use P when you are speaking. All right. But I'm going to use some other informal expression. Look, here he has gone to urinate. After he, this entire part I will change. He has gone to urinate. Only he, I have retained here. Now this part entirely will be changed. He is, he is off, O double F, off to have a leak, L E A K. Very informal, my dear friends. Not only informal, also humorous, very funny. This uh, sentence is very funny. So when you want to just uh, uh, crack a joke about uh, urination, then you may say that, use this word. He is off to have a leak. Off, he is off means he has gone. To have a leak means to urinate. The spelling you see, L-E-A-K, leak. All right. Leak, this word is uh, very common. In Bengali also, in Hindi also, people use this word very often. Okay, in all the Indian languages, I think uh, we use this word leak. But here it's a phrase, to have a leak. To have a leak means to urinate. He has gone to have a uh, leak. He has gone to have a leak. Now here I have not written he has gone. I have written he is off to have a leak. The entire one is informal. Okay, next, number seven. I am always honest. I'm always honest. Even a student of class one, not uh, if uh, he is in an English medium school, I think a student of class one also will understand the meaning of this sentence. I am always honest and very formal indeed. So everywhere you can use this expression. You need not hesitate. But now I'm going to write a phrase. I'm going to use a phrase instead of Honest, I shall be using that phrase. Let me tell you, my dear friends, the uh, phrase which I'm going to use now here is not informal exactly, but you may use this when you are speaking English or when you are writing, whatever uh, be the occasion. You may use the word, uh, that, uh, that particular phrase, which I'm going to give you now. And what is that phrase for honest? I am always on when on the t h e on the level l e v e l i'm always honest i'm always on the level you know i'm very proud of my father why because my father uh, has always been on the level my father has been always honest next number eight you can easily puzzle a stupid person. You can easily, this part is okay. I will not uh, touch this part. Only this last part, that is puzzle a stupid person. Puzzle a stupid person. This part only I'm going to change. And uh, that has a very uh, funny effect even that particular uh, part that that particular uh, those two words I shall be using, of course. All right, one in uh, I mean in the place of puzzle, another a stupid person. So what should be the uh, informal funny expression? You can easily flummox f l u double m o x Flamox, a uh, lamox, L U double M O X. So the uh, sentence will be you can easily flamox a lamox. A lamox means a stupid person or a clumsy fellow. A clumsy fellow is also called uh, uh, lamox. He's a lamox. Okay, I don't know. Argue with you. Why I don't want to argue with you? 
because you are a lamox. Don't tell anybody, the person will be very much angry with you then. Okay, so flamox means to puzzle or to perplex, and lamox means a stupid person or a clumsy person. Uh, doesn't this have a very funny effect? Not only funny, how rhythmic, see? Flamox, lamox. You will enjoy using this uh, particular part of the sentence. Okay, number nine now. Actually, I wanted to give you 10 sentences, but unfortunately, uh, nine sentences have occupied the entire space of the board. So, I'm going to give you today only nine, and this is number nine, and this is going to be the last one for this video session. He is an unimportant extra person, an unimportant extra person, unimportant person whom sometimes we add to something or we include um, maybe in a team or in a group only to increase the number, but you don't, you don't expect uh, uh, much from him. Why? Because we know that uh, it, it is beyond his capacity. So this type of a person, an unimportant extra person, he is a, you know the word, only the meaning, I, I, in this sense, that word is used perhaps you do not know. So he is an unimportant extra person. So this part I shall be changing only. An unimportant extra person. So what shall I write? He is a make wit. A make wit. M A K E W A W E I G H T W E I G H T. He is a make wit. He is a make wit. Who wants to be a make wit? Everybody wants to be a heavyweight, okay? So, um, this make weight is exactly the opposite of a heavyweight. When you say that are oh, political heavyweights, that means those who are uh, political leaders, political honchos, we generally say they are heavyweight. But uh, a person who just uh, doesn't have a very uh, strong voice, generally is added to a, a procession or a gathering only to increase the number. So that particular person is called a makewit. So a makewit very seldom gets the chance to meet the heavyweights. He's so far behind that it is not possible for him to uh, meet the political heavyweights. All right, so we have learned these 10 sentences uh, of course, formal, in formal sentences, recast into informal sentences. I think these words you will enjoy using, okay? Because these words are all very uh, known to you. You cannot say that sir, this particular word is unknown. Perhaps, yes, this word may be unknown. Flamox and lamox. These two words are absolutely uncommon to you, mostly. I think so. Not everybody, there are people who know the word, or you may know this one word, flamox, or you may know only the word lamox, but whether they can be used in this particular fashion or not, that is uh, unknown to you. So from this you have learned today, and for a uh, rhythmic effect, you may use this particular part in a sentence, all right? Of course, if the uh, context demands so, otherwise not. My dear friends, those of you who are new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. Um, according to the uh, YouTube uh, analytics, the people who watch these uh, videos on this channel are uh, not the subscribers of this channel. Sorry, subscribers of this uh, channel. Sorry, yes, but. Uh, the analytics show that uh, mostly those who have not subscribed yet watch these videos. But I don't understand why, my dear friends, why don't you subscribe? If you don't like this channel, let me know that. Let me know my fault. What is the reason? If you tell me what the reason is, I shall try to improve my style. Okay, so please guide me, my dear friends. If you subscribe to this channel, it will be easier for us to carry on with this type of work. Thank you very much. See you again in the next video session. Bye-bye.